Hello and good evening, YouTube, and no, you are not dreaming. It's Nostradamus! Nostradamus! Oh my god, dude. Man, we have not done a Nostradamus video in over six months. Just a couple of days, just a little bit of a break there between them. There, were, I was not intending to do another Nostradamus um, this season, but then... I remember that this series exists, so, you know, why not? Who cares? It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Nothing matters. We're all just going to die of a heat death eventually anyway. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, miniwebtool.com. It has been a hot minute. All right. I got a big old list here. It's only a one-pager. Only a one-pager. Not bad. The front row consisted of Takuma Sano, Scott Dixon, and the pole sitter, Marco Andretti. That's right. We're actually gonna follow reality this time, yeah. I probably should have made this before qualifying, but it's like, who cares? Let's just go. Driving hard into turn one. Oh, it's our first name. All right, who's the first name? The first leader of the race is Charlie Kimball. This is already a meme. Charlie Kimball came out with the lead and led the first lap. From here, the first quarter of the race became a three-way battle for the lead between Helio Castroneves, Ed Carpenter, and Alexander Rossi. What? What is this normalcy? What is this extremely reasonable possibility? I thought this was Nostradamus. I thought this was supposed to be as absurd as possible. On lap 47, the first caution of the day flew for Ed Carpenter. Spinning on the back stretch, man, the battle for the lead, getting hot and spicy in the first quarter of the event. Can you believe it? Green flag racing resumed on lap 54 with Sage Karam in the lead. He's been in so many of these Indy 500s by now. You think Sage Karam would accomplish something with his life? You know, he did win that first IndyCar iRacing event, wasn't it? The first one that they did on iRacing. You remember the iRacing events, man? That feels like a lifetime ago. Feels like a lifetime of misery ago. The battle between him and Fernando Alonso resumed with the two swapping the lead regularly. Imagine if this 2020 Indianapolis 500 came down to Sage Karam and Fernando Alonso. <laughs> Just imagine if that's how the last lap ends up. The battle was interrupted on lap 64 when Simon Pagano lost control of his car in turn two and hit the outside wall. Man, the defending Indianapolis 500 winner will not get to defend his crown because since he hit the wall, he's basically out of the race, which means he's coming out of the lineup. There he goes. Goodbye, Pagano. We'll remember your Menards commercials well. Did he, did he ever appear in a Menards commercial? Whatever. The race was attempted to be resumed on lap 71, but reports of moisture briefly delayed the restart. Yeah, I think the moisture is um, all of the uh, s the Spaniards in the crowd when Fernando Alonso's up here battling for the lead. That's the moisture. Except there's no fans at the track, so maybe not. The race went back green on lap 74, where Oliver Askew took the lead. You know, the thing about this is that I don't think anyone besides a Penske driver is going to win this race, so anyone that is not in a Penske car, I think, is an absurd person to be battling for the lead, so that's just... I just want to come out and say that. I just want to be full frontal with you on that one. The third caution of the day came out on lap 94 when James Hinchcliffe and Connor Daly hit the wall in turn one. Man, oh man. The... Excitement, James Hinchcliffe back in the car, that doesn't last long. And Connor Daly, I mean, Daly has been okay this year. He has been actually pretty decent, not even gonna lie. Goodbye, Hinchcliffe, we knew ye well. I just erased James Hinchcliffe from the list like, uh, like, um, uh, I don't know his name. Schmidt Peterson, good lord, oh my god, I have not, I'm not good at my job. The green flag came out again on lap 104. Takuma Sato led for the opening few laps after the restart, but soon fell behind. Zach Veach, I remember Zach Veach rookie year and I was like, man, 
This guy's got potential. And it's been, what, three years, and he's still done nothing. Very sad. Very sad indeed. On lap 115, the fourth caution period of the race occurred when the rear suspension on the car of Oliver Askew, no, broke, sending him in spinning into the turn one wall. So the early success out of Oliver Askew does not translate to the race finish as he does not even make it to the race finish. Racing resumed on lap 121 with J.R. Hildebrand in the lead. Do not think that I have forgotten that Nostradamus sentenced J.R. Hildebrand to another astronomically unlikely, inconceivably painful period of agony. I don't know. I'm sorry. I can't think of words right now. Another caution flag came out at lap 145 for Marcus Erickson and... J.R. Hildebrand. Oh my god. Hitting the backstretch wall. Why Nostradamus? Why do you have to do this to J.R. Hildebrand? The man. Has the man not suffered enough already? Has he not? Racing resumed on lap 158 with... Pat O'Ward in the lead, but... Alex Polo? Palo? Palo? I don't actually know how to pronounce it, I'm sorry. Took the lead almost immediately. What is this rookie battle? in the closing laps of the 2020 Indianapolis 500. The final caution of the day came on lap 162 when Scott Dixon hit the wall in turn four. Man, the cataclysmic season that Scott Dixon has gotten off to. I mean, if he wins the Indianapolis 500 this year, like, the championship's over, isn't it? Isn't it just basically done at this point? It's just like, yeah, we ran, what, six races, six out of 20 races, it's, it's over. This is the opposite of Brian Francis' wet dream. The green flag flew once again on lap 167. The battle for the lead became a three-way duel. My goodness gracious. A three-way duel between Renus VK, James Davison, and James Davison. <laughs> See, when I say that Rick Ware is literal cancer, I mean it is multiplied. They have entered IndyCar, and not only have they taken over, but they're already multiplying. There are two James Davisons. Renus VK and James Davison. Imagine. Just fucking imagine that battle for the win. With 10 laps to go, it became apparent that the leaders would need a splash of fuel to get the cars to the end of the race. Gasp. Of the leading group. Oh, who's our first pitter? Charlie Kimball. He's still in the lead group. He's just been up there the whole time, just hanging out. Would be the first to pit, followed by Ed Carpenter. And finally, Sage Karam. The ultimate meme lineup. Charlie Kimball, Ed Carpenter, and Sage Karam. It appeared the winner would be the driver with the best stop. But when Karam made a stop, the leader of the race passed to Oliver Eskew. What? who had been 10th at the time of the previous restart. Askew attempted to gamble on fuel and finish the race without another pit stop. With two laps to go, he began to con slow considerably in order to bring the car to the finish. As the white flag fell, he held the lead over... Patricio Award! Oh my god, dude! You're kidding me, Nostradamus! As the white flag fell, he held the lead over Patricio O'Ward. When the checkered flag flew, the winner of the race was... It's down to Oliver Askew and Patricio O'Ward. Nostradamus, who do you got? <laughs> Oliver Askew! The man! The man has done it! Oliver Askew will win the 2020 Indianapolis 500 as predicted by Nostradamus. He's going to do it over Paddle Award. I mean, SPM has been such trash, such trash at Indianapolis lately. The only way that they would ever contend for the win would probably be a fuel mileage. And isn't Askew, yeah, isn't Award and Askew... It's going to be an SPM 1-2 at Indianapolis, a track that they have been absolute garbage at since Hinchcliffe won the pole. 
I can't believe it, dude. That is that is amazing. And absolutely no mention of Penske. Helio Castroneves and Simon Pagano were the only Penske drivers mentioned this entire time. And I mean, they were irrelevant in qualifying and all, but like, they're probably going to win. <laughs> but Oliver Askew is going to win the 2020 Indianapolis 500, which means, which means that I raced in an iRacing lobby with an Indianapolis 500 winning driver. Imagine the fuck that, guys. It's just crazy how, the, just crazy the places that this world takes you. Anyway, that is Nostradamus. We back. Probably this is going to be the last Nostradamus of the year. <laughs> but yeah, so anyway. Nostradamus has predicted Oliver Askew to win the Indianapolis 500, and I'm just like, whatever, do it, bring it on, bring on Askew in victory lane. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Well, in any case, thank you all so much for watching this and Cause Games, making an actual quality video for once. Isn't that something? Never thought you'd see that again, right? Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye. And I overdrove the corner flow. Going 40 miles an hour into this corner and I'm still overdriving the track. Oh! Oh! Oh, he's spinning! What a fucking Chad! What a fucking Chad! Did you see that? This absolute fucking beast! Oh my god, I can't even be mad! That was such a good save! Holy shit! That was so good. And I can't fucking drive forward because this car sucks and this track sucks and this game sucks. <laughs>